Hello everybody, how are you? How are things in your world? And guys, I don't know what was going on in my life that I didn't take care of this, but we're going to take care of it now. This is a review of the king of country. He's back. All hail. George Strait's Honky Tonk Time Machine. Now, if you're not familiar with George Strait, it's because you've been listening to too much new country. And you should give this album a listen. Uh, George Strait, just for some quick context, started uh, with a song Unwound in 1981 and quickly claimed the uh, title of King of Country and is currently one of the defenders of the old country sound. And you're saying, well, how did he develop it? He grew up in Pearsall, Texas. That's all you need to know. They say in Texas that if you ever get lost, get out of this car and look up and you'll see a sign that says, uh, welcome to Pearsall. Because if you find yourself there, you are completely lost. It's in the middle of nowhere, but it's a heart of Texas, and that's where country music thrives. So let's get right into it. We're just going to go track by track. I'm going to tell you what every song is all about and see what is happening in the world of George Strait. Track number one, Every Little Honky Tonk Bar. This is kicking off the song. It was the number one. It was the first single and the number one single off of the album. And every little honky tonk bar talks about a bar that their family owned in Pearsall, Texas, and they developed into a honky tonk empire. Uh, okay, all throughout Frio County. So this is the very first one. It was in the Pearsall. Okay, the Pearsall, the Pearsall Poteet, they called it, because uh, George was born in Poteet and raised in Pearsall, and his family called it the Pearsall Poteet. They said, if you get out, the saying was, the, the joke at the time was, if you get out of the, if you get out of control at the Pearsall Poteet, you ain't leaving on your feet. Okay, that means that uh, you're going to be coming out on a stretcher. So behave yourself at the uh, honky tonk they own down there in Pearsall. And one of the honky tonks that you find throughout the county. They've got like 700, 800 of them. But uh, the same rule applies. This isn't uh, your. Uh, this isn't like your hometown, okay? Where they're just gonna. I mean, you gotta be. You gotta keep it. Keep it cool, because if you do not behave, okay, things are not gonna. Things are not gonna work out for you. But that's the law of the land in uh, remote Texas, because things haven't much changed since uh, Texas became a state, okay? Uh, but that song is the big single, and that's the one every, everybody loves. Two More Wishes is the next song. Two More Wishes is a follow-up to, to Every Little Honky Tonk Bar. It's the story of somebody that did not behave themselves, okay, and had to deal with the popo uh, coming around to collect them. When they, when they, what happened was they were playing darts in one of the honky tonk bars, and there was a little this there was a little argument about was that a tw was that game 21 or not okay they were playing 21 every dart player knows what i'm talking about and some bottles started flying fists started flying and this song talks about they wish they had two more wishes okay one of which is to get out of jail and the other is to two get out of the hospital bed okay that's what that song's all about some Nights is a beautiful, languid love song about the land and about growing up in, in the just southwest uh, of San Antonio, uh, in between San Antonio and Texas. That country is so beautiful, not, not, ne not necessarily in the middle of July, okay? In the middle of July in Texas, they say you can melt your hat. All right, because it gets up to be maybe mid 90s, but the humidity gets to be 150 percent. And you say, well, how can the humidity be over 100 percent? I'm telling you, the humidity goes up to like 150 percent. So what happens is you take a shower, then you step out of the shower to dry yourself, and you need to take another shower. That's how it rolls in that part of Texas. Next is God and Country Music. Again, George is one of the van, one of the defenders, one of the stanchions, one of the, uh, what you could say, a cornerstone of traditional country or neo-traditional country. And so God and Country Music speaks to that role and speaks to that responsibility he feels 
because there's such an onslaught of country music, for example, with snap tracks. If I hear one more country music song with a snap track, I'm gonna snap myself in the head like this. Let me see. See, you get it. Ah, see, it kind of hurts. And that's the way it hurts when you listen to one more country music song with this. And if you hear a snap track on a George Strait uh, a song, I'll, I'll eat my cowboy hat, okay? I'll go out and buy one and then eat it. All right, so that's what that song's about. Blue Water talks about the Gulf of Mexico. It's going down when they were, when they were young, teenagers, okay? They were teenagers, they were starting to drive, and in Texas, they start driving at 12, 13 years old. So this is the story of hopping in the pickup truck at the age of 13 and driving from Pearsall down to the Gulf of Mexico. Now, not on the Galveston side. They drove all the way around on a road trip to Florida to celebrate spring break when they were 13 years old. So a bunch of the kids jumped, jumped in the back and George was driving. And that is a song about that experience, uh, avoiding the cops with some high speed chases, driving along the beach, all the fun they have at like 13 years old in um, coming, along, com coming around to Florida on spring break and then driving back before their parents knew the truck was gone. That was the big trick. You're gonna love this song. Sometimes love, again, is a story of being young and falling in and out of love. You think this, and remember when you were your first love, when you were, this is the love of my life. We are gonna spend the rest of our li lives together. And the next thing you know, you're walking home from school and you see her holding hands with the quarterback of the football team. And you're like, well, whew, that's some new information. I didn't see that coming. That, and then, of course, she denies it, and you get, you get into a whole thing. That's what that song's about. This At that age, sometimes love, sometimes you're getting chased by the entire football team because you're pissed off the quarterback. Okay, that's what that's about. The next song, <clears throat> Codigo. So Codigo is the name of a horse he had that, the, he, that he'd ride the ranch. His father owned a 2,000-acre ranch uh, down there in Pearsall. And Kodigo was his horse. So he'd ride the range singing songs and he'd play. He was basically one of the original singing cowboys of, the, of that era, right? So he'd ride along the range and he'd have his gloves on because he had to fix the barbed wire fences and he'd rewrap the fence. But he'd still hold a pick, a guitar pick in his gloved hand and he'd sing songs. And it's the middle of summer, it's no one's around. You're in the middle of, you know, emptiness. And so that was the inspiration, though. He'd say, Go to go, go to go. Where did my heart go? You know, that kind of trying to get a rhyme going, trying to get some feeling, trying to see where a song will go. And that's what that song's about. Number, ne uh, number eight <laughs> next on the list is Old Violin. Now, his dad had an old violin. George didn't just grow up in his, you know, a lot of the people, times musicians and singers, they grew up in a family that is musically inclined, and that was the case with the uh, Straits. They had an old violin in the corner, and after dinner and after a couple of, uh, you know, they'd get out the old violin. Now, in Texas, an old violin is, is known more commonly as a fiddle. So the dad would get up on the, uh, get up there in the living room, they'd get the fire going in the middle of winter, and there's again, there's no one around for seven, eight hundred miles. And this was the entertainment. He'd get out the fiddle and and George would get out on the guitar and their mom would sing. And sometimes the kids would dance around, do some um, do some line dancing, do some do -si do some uh, square dancing. And that's how sometimes they get the cows to come in and dance too. And the cows would be just bopping like this, okay, to the violets. <laughs> and it was a whole family thing. Uh, you'd make do when you're out there in the middle of Texas. Take Me Away talks about as he got older, he wanted to expand his horizons. He was playing in the honky-tonks of Texas, but now he's getting older, he's getting a little bit more, he's getting restless. As, as young men do, they want to see the world. And he's saying, take me away, Lord, take me away to Nashville, take me away to Memphis, all of the big country music. He wanted to stake his claim. But again, he was young and was, he wasn't the George Strait king of country that we know today. He was... He was, let's say, a, a, a pawn, if you looked at it like a chessboard, okay? 
And so uh, at that point, he's saying, Lord, take me away. Take me away to Nashville. Let me have a shot. If I'm not good enough, Lord, then so be it. But give me a shot. And of course, we all know what happened. They became a superstar. Number 10, The Weight of the Badge. Uh, this, is a, this is a really interesting song because it talks about what the, he was sheriff of Pearsall for one year, and it talks about his feeling the responsibility of the badge. Okay, he was a sheriff, and in those in that county, they actually wear an actual badge that they might have worn in the old West days. So it was a part-time job that he took. Uh, he, he took it was full-time job, but he took it just to pay the bills while he was getting his country music career off the ground. And it talks about a couple of incidences uh, where he's breaking up fights at his family's honky-tonk, the Pearsall Poteet. Uh, really exciting, a lot of action. And then, of course, the title song. Now, a lot of times the title song is placed at the beginning, but this is uh, Honky Tonk Time Machine, the title of the album, number 11 on the list. Honky Tonk Time Machine, talking about trying to protect traditional country and in his mind going back to those days the early the early days before the click tracks the snap tracks before the anthems about uh, drinking beer on spring break uh, just a simple country songs about breakups pickup trucks and f-ups right of life and that is what honky tonk time machine is going back to a simpler time and enjoying the guitar based country sound that, that uh, was dominant from the 1850s up through up through the time the Georgia Florida line the Florida Georgia line graduated from college and that's uh, or when they graduated from high school right around then is, is when the new the new country came out and and all all art forms have to evolve okay but in this case it's good to know that there are still arbiters still purveyors of the traditional country sound and then the next track what goes up this is another song about the music business because a lot of times things go up it's a play off the words of what goes up must come down and he went up and never came down he is the king of country and will have that title until he decides to give it up and he, he already has i saw a video he already has a giant wrestling belt buckle that says king of country kind of like the wrestlers do and he's ready to hand it over to whoever he decides is worthy of the crown but it talks about the ups and downs of the music business and coming up and what you have to go through uh, a lot of people don't know the years and years and years of takes of playing honky tonks from Pearsall all the way up to uh, Nova Scotia and back, you know, even playing California, uh, coming out to California and trying to play country music out here, uh, and that's difficult, okay, because uh, it's you're a long way from home, you're years and years of being on the road and at the ups and downs of the business. And finally, Sing One with Willie featuring Willie Nelson. Now, if you're not familiar with Willie Nelson, Willie Nelson, along with Waylon Jennings, and really you should say uh well i was gonna say are known as the outlaws of country and you really could put johnny cash in that category too because i don't think you'd have a willie or a whalen unless you had johnny cash who came a little bit before but nonetheless all three of those characters were not happy this is an interesting thing we're not happy with the traditional um country sound although they all started in that vein, in that uh, format, but then eventually became the outlaws of country and started a different sound. So here they are together. So in other words, Willie, one of the original vanguards of new country at the time, okay, the early 70s, when marijuana was discovered in the United States. And, that, and in fact, some scientists think marijuana was discovered by Willie Nelson because he's done so much research into the topic. Uh, a lot of them attribute the, the uh, appearance of uh, marijuana in American culture. They trace it back to Willie Nelson in high school. So I don't know, I don't know how those studies were, were, were arrived at. But here you have Willie Nelson, who was one of the original outlaws of country who were going against the traditional country sound in a duet with the 
king of country who is one of the defenders of the traditional country sound. So it's a great dynamic. They're old friends. And of course, at this point in time of country music development, uh, a lot of those uh, old rivalries and, and uh, old different paths, different genres and subgenres of the sound tend to blend together to the point now where you're seeing a revival of country trap, which is becoming so big uh, along the lines of Lil Nas X and Old Town Road and songs like that. So that is a beautiful thing because otherwise the music would not evolve and it would get tiresome, it would get old. You constantly want to refresh uh, the sound, but what happens is the older school look at the young guys and say, hey man, that's not the real sound. But, you know, who's to say what the real sound is? And that's part of the fun of music, is that it's constantly shifting, changing, evolving, but it's also good to know that when if a genre finds a traditional sound, that you have the vanguards of the old sound protecting it, just like the king of country, George Strait. Honky Tonk Time Machine, great album. Pick it up today.